made for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> ben Stein coming in tonight. The great Ben Stein from the course. Uh, win Ben Stein's money. Did you talk to our buddy Bobcat Goldthwait today at all? Yes, I did. And what was his excuse? He forgot. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, good times. He got confused. About? Uh, I don't know. Forgetting? I talked to Bob. I talked to Bobcat at Jimmy's show uh, yesterday about 4 or 5 in the afternoon, and I said, uh, are you coming in tonight? And he said, uh, yeah, either me or Jimmy's coming in tonight or both of us. And I said, well, I'll see you then. And uh, he I think, forgot. I think sometimes when he does too much of that voice, he starts acting like that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone's turning on Bobcat. No, no. That, no He's good just, people at Bobcat. Good guy. Is. Absolutely. I'm disappointed we didn't see him last night. All right. Well, we'll see him soon. No. Yeah. And then he said, uh, am I coming in tonight? <laughs> and I said, uh, no. Nope. That ship sailed, buddy. We got uh, Ben Stein coming in from uh, Win Jimmy Kimmel's Money. And uh, he's also a uh, judge on Star Search. And let me say this. I judged on Star Search. Yeah, I but, did a little guest appearance. It seems like Ben does it, was asked back. No, Ben Ben accepted the gig. I see. He does it full time. I, I was offered the gig. Here's the deal. There's a lot of stuff in this business where they talk about this and that's going to ruin your career. This is one of those things? This is one of those things because you'll perpetually be a judge. But l- let me tell you what being a judge means. And let me tell you if this sounds like a bad career to anybody we're listening to. Uh, anyone's listening to us. The show is uh, the show is live. The Star Search. Live, live. Live, live. So you sit down, camera's it's going one on. hour long. Mm-hmm. Starts at, uh, I don't know, 6 in the evening out here. Mm-hmm. Maybe 7 in the evening. Mm-hmm. Goes for one hour. And I don't care if Arsenio Hall is uh, lynched, catches on fire, is uh, raped with a mop handle. It's still over in an hour. Still over. All these things, by the way, I would give him a high score for if I was judging. If you saw him, that happened to him? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now. Here's what you do. You sit there, and you just put a puss on while some nine-year-old black chick sings her ass off right for you, to you. Or some other kid is tap dancing, or some, there's some acrobatic team from China or something. They're going nuts. And then at the end, and they tell you before, uh, you only got about two seconds. That's all you got to do. So they get to you, and you go, uh, it was good. It wasn't great. I give it a four. And everyone starts applauding, right? Hour goes by in the blink of an eye because everyone's just dancing their ass off in front you of you. You speak four times. You speak four times for for a combined total of 17 and a half seconds. And at the end of it, a guy gives you $10,000 and says, can you please come back and do more? And, a and you go, yeah, and a, and a gift basket of the windbreaker and a candle. Oh. And you go, I don't know if I want to ruin my career. <laughs> You may not have to get ten grand a day for working an hour, and it's not just an hour; it's an hour and twenty minutes because you got to get the makeup yeah, on. Minutes, yeah. And uh, I get my own trailer and everything. I mean, hell. Where does it film? Films up the street. Films CBS? at the Hollywood Center Studio, where oh, we used to oh where we used to uh, do Love Line and the Man Show, where you know every security guard, every parking. Yeah, drive on, yeah. park in my own space. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Good we should time. all have our, our careers ruined that way. By the way. And, and this is the only business, by the way, where people go like, sure, you'll be rich for not working, but you'll be ruined. Your career will be ruined. Like, is there any other career where someone is going to give you ten grand for about an hour's worth of work and, and, and offer that gig to you, where you just sit there and get pampered, have someone put makeup on you and get you Perrier, you and uh, they give you ten grand, it's like, yeah, you're ruined, buddy. Ruin? That's, uh, that's my kind of ruining. That's the gig I want. I want to judge. Yeah. I want to judge. I'm going to talk to Ben about doing that. All right. So, Wait, I, but you turned it down. I, t- I turned it down because I was doing the uh, ABC thing. Uh, but great. soon. Yeah. Here's the thing about judge, too. I look at judging as a nice hammock under a shady tree that's waiting for me. Sure. Just waiting. I'd yeah, like to ride climb out. climb in any time. Climb in somewhere in my 40s uh-huh. and lean back and just spend 20 years judging. Eventually, put on a ton of weight. Start wearing a turtleneck and one of those fat guy Dom DeLuise hats yes. and grow a big beard. 
I start laughing at everything. And laugh maniacally at everything because I'm really high in prescription meds. Or you could be Orson Bean. You could become just very erudite, wear white button-down shirts. Yes, I'll start speaking with a, a an affect, like an English affect, and wear like a, 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 a dicky or possibly an ascot and a navy blazer. There you go. Either way, I'll still have the fat guy hat, though, because it'll be like a signature thing. I'll start doing a thing where I start where, where carrying a cane or something. There's some some something that's sort of uh, some affectation that I carry around. I'm going to work on this, Drew, and then I'm just going to coast through life. And here's the thing, too. Once you establish yourself as one of those guys, one of those old game show guys from the 70s, you can wear the same outfit every day. No one says anything. You have to. It becomes like a bad superhero it's your outfit. Uniform. It's, your uniform. Yeah, it's your uniform. Family Guy did something tonight that was yeah. one of your bits. I don't yeah. know what it was now. All right. Elliot? Hey. You're 18? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, I um, just want to say I've been a fan of the show for a while. I've been listening to the tune of five years. Wow. Oh. Work to the tune of it. Yes, I nice. did. Nice. All right. So my question is, I would like Hold to... Hold on. Hold on. I just thought of one of the... Uh, you know, I got that big, long list of things uh, that I want to do before I die. Yeah. Having uh, having my hands registered as uh, as weapons, diving into a body of water with a knife in my mouth, that kind of stuff. Having a cape removed from me. Yes, yes. You know, you know the one more thing I decided today. Huh. I want somebody in my group after I greet uh, a group of reporters and say, uh, uh, "Hello, yes, yes, I'm good, I'm good," and then they all start shouting questions. There'll be no more questions. Yes, somebody <laughs> somebody yells, "Thank you, no. thank you." No more, questions no more questions as I walk away. I don't say no more questions. Yeah. Someone in my entourage yells no more questions as I walk away. I'm going to work on that, too. Maybe the same guy removes my cape. <laughs> Elliot? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, bud. Oh, it's all good. Um, I want to know if there have been any recent developments with the male birth control, and if you guys think, if there was, if people would really take it. What, what mm -hmm. made you ask this question? Well, I'm doing a... Um, a speech on this in my communications class. I'm going to Cal State Long Beach. I, I strangely did a piece on this for CNN tonight. Uh, nice. Where, yeah, there was a new study out of Australia where they proved the contraceptive efficacy over a couple of years of a combination shot of progesterone and little e testosterone pellets like like uh, mooring bit that they put under the skin of the men, and so they, they get enough testosterone and they shut them down with the progesterone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Wait a minute. At, I, they use the, the, pro the progesterone. Shuts the, the progesterone is the female. It's a, it's a female hormone that has. But it's not. It's not estrogen. It's progesterone. Different. Okay, but let, let me let, let's get something straight. Yeah. Uh, testosterone, male hormone. Yep. Estrogen, female hormone. Progesterone, female hormone. Progesterone, female. Does male have a second uh, hormone? <coughs> We have p adrenal hormones that have androgenic activity. But they have two big ones. <coughs> DHEA. They and have the estrogen two and big ones. progesterone. And we have one big one. We have yes. one big one. Yes. I got one medium one. Medium to small one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So the they give you the progesterone to right. shut down the sperm. Right. And they, but but that also they, shuts the testosterone down. Right. So they give you testosterone back. But doesn't the testosterone... Re-stimulate the sperm production? Yes. No, it probably even suppresses it more. Really? Yeah. The the thing and this particular the, the idea is ultimately there'll be a shot that a guy takes every three or four months, and in this particular uh, pill it actually increased their sex drive. Wow. Yeah. So we're thinking. So my. Well, it increased it because they they were overshooting probably in the amount they were giving them. No, I mean because they were on the birth control. It was like a like a car or a movie or something that was going to get returned. Like like they did the work. They wanted to use it. Like when I rent porn, I beat off twice as much because it's, it costs money. Probably probably actually is just too much testosterone. Around. So if I beat off once, the one time cost me six bucks. But I, I beat off like 70 times, it's like three cents a piece. That's nice. You see what I'm saying? Elliot, you, you know what I'm saying? At math. Oh, oh yeah. Know. Yeah. But Elliot, yeah. I bring that up because that seemed to motivate the guys to use it uh, although I got to admit, I, I the thing I brought up is I've been working with Trojan for a while to try to get them to find ways to get guys to use condoms and practice safe sex, and it's almost impossible. A, to get guys to cooperate with that. B, get a guy into a doctor every three months. Where, I mean, what world is that going to happen? And that's the other part. And then C, guys are just going to be taking, uh, you know, band aids and cutting them into weird shapes and sticking them on their <laughs> yeah, arms like, I'm, and I'm eating a pez in yeah. front of a chick, going, "Oh yeah, baby, you're safe with me." That, that that concerns me too. However, you know, we could raise a new generation uh, to be used to this kind of thing and to be more responsible. We've certainly put the burden squarely on women. Yeah. Is, and the, to the extent where it's kind of shocking, because I was reading the side effects and going, "No, no, no, guys, never do this." And I thought. 
well, think about the women put up with these pills. I know. They gain weight. They're moody. They're uh, periods all over the place. Now here's the ironic thing. The only guys you're going to get to take those pills are the gays who don't need them. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I think Gay I guy do. would be very sympathetic and do that. Yeah. Straight guy don't want to do that. Responsible. It's Sympathetically it's, responsible. It's like with recycling. Right. Gays recycle. Yeah. Let's face it. Good times. Mm-hmm. You ready to keep rolling here? Yeah, uh-huh. One day I'll tell you the group that doesn't recycle the most. Who? I can't say it. It's too racist. <laughs> Starts with an M. I'm online. I mean, I'm yeah. with an N. You are. Can't do it. I can't do it. I work with them all day. I beg them to do it. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say. If I beg them, they can't do it. Tyler? Yep. You're 18? Yep. What's up? Um, well, I'm dating the girl who... I'm best friends with her brother. All right. I'm annoyed. The connection's bad. Tyler's bad. The phone's cutting out. Tyler, hang on until I get more patience. Bill? Yeah. You're 17? Mm-hmm. What's up? Well, I'm kind oh of... boy. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is my new policy. Yeah. Jason? Yeah, how's it going? Good. You're 21. What's your question? Uh, my question is for Dr. Drew. I just want to say long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I'm kind of going bald on top of my head here, and I want to know the actual long-term effects of Rogaine, if there's any side effects that that might have on my actual hair if I stop using it. If you stop using it, the hair will f probably fall out again. Okay, so that means if I start using it, I have to use it for keep, the rest of my life? You have to keep using it. Yeah, Propecia is the well, other thing you can do. Well, pill. wait a minute. But stopping using the Rogaine doesn't make your hair fall out. It just goes back to goes where back, you were. Yeah, it's not as though it, f it instantly falls out the day you stop using the Rogaine. No, but I mean, it's not like the Rogaine even had anything to do with it. Right. Right. Okay, now, so you think Propecia is a better alternative now, or is there mm -hmm. any, like, herbal remedies that I could use? Sort they of say thing. they say to use the Rogaine and the Propecia yeah, in together. concert with each other. If you really want to get some effect, believe me. Look, if there were easy natural ways to do it, people would know about it, right? It would not right, be a secret. Right. It would not be a secret. Yeah, Propecia and Rogaine evidently is the uh, thing to do, and they're probably they're making pretty good strides in the uh, transplant program. Yep. I think. Yep, they are. And it's one of those things where everyone pictures hair plugs as hair plugs. Mm -mm. Right, it's right, also, yeah. It's also one of those things where you don't know if a guy had a good job or not. And I would right. bet you that many celebrities who you don't know, I mean, like I said, if you've got a couple of, couple of bucks to spend on it and you can afford to take a month off and go to Arizona and uh, convalesce over okay. there and nobody knows, uh, you're good. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean... It's not really relevant to see it right now, but I can tell that it's starting to become a problem, and I wanted to just know if there was going to be pre any preventative measures I could actually do. Put the, the, now's the time to use the Rogaine and use it regularly, and that's exactly the kind of balding that it does a good job on. So, I wonder, right, is well, there, what do you there think's you around the corner from a technological standpoint, Drew? Uh, another, just a stronger version of the same thing, basically, with no side effects. Mm -hmm. Then I was thinking about... A couple things we seem to be ahead of, a couple things we seem to be behind on, like um, like getting rid of rats and roaches and bugs and stuff. Behind? Yeah, seem, seems like, and, and hair stuff for men. You know, guys, I mean, I know, I know it sounds cliche, but we have been on the moon for 30-something years now. The whole hair thing, just starting to, starting to get a handle on it. Starting to get a handle on it. And there's stuff. That just seems like taller orders that we've we're done with, you know. You, you know, it seems. Think about this though. Think how big a deal the, the hair loss thing was in the '70s when the hair was everything. Right. Yeah, everyone shaves their head. Well, Who everyone cares? shaves their head because no one's really found a good. No one's figured a good thing out, though. But if you're losing your hair today, it's a, yeah. So what? Well, I know, but uh, like I said, I think a lot of it was just based on people not being able to do anything about it. Yeah. I'm just saying. Here's the other thing I want. You know those sonic things that are supposed to get rid of rats and roaches and bugs? You want them to work? I want them to work. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I mean, you see the, the drawing on the box, like when you're, in the, when you're on the plane and you're looking at the Sky Mall pamphlet, oh, yeah. and you're looking in there, and the gopher's like holding his ears <laughs> and running for your neighbor's yard, like sprinting. Crazy. Anderson, make the uh, cartoon running sound, because that's, uh, that's that crazy can with the corn in it. That, that's the sound... It's making what in the rat with corn in it? 
I don't know what it is. No, there's a, there's another one that has a cra- it's a crazier sound wow. than that. It sounds like a, a drum with a acorn in it. Wow. You got that, Anderson? Sorry. He's looking. Oh. No. Get the paddles. Okay, the paddles. The point is we can't work that out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be awesome. You plug a few of those in the house, spiders, roaches, ants, every, everything's just running the other way. I like what they just turn upside down. Yeah. That's that's the picture I like. And those big X's yeah, for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how the X-Ry thing worked, but uh, all right, let's uh, keep keep on keeping on here, Drew. John? John, yeah. Hello. What's we got a guy from Boston in the background? He yeah, we do. Unfortunately, he doesn't care. That's cool though. Red Sox, right? Who's the guy in the oh. background? My sweetmate. Oh, well, that's good. Hey, remember, uh, no, we didn't talk to the screeners, but ironically, we're sort of looking out for it. We were talking to producer Ann before we went on the air tonight. And I was saying, I don't care what kind of questions we get. I'm just tired of jack-offs calling this show. They're, listen, screeners, listen to me for a second. If there's 19 guys in the background and you got some jack-off screaming and it's noisy or the line is bad or the guy... Or there's a good five-second count in between him answering your, the question you asked and... The next, the next word that comes out of his mouth, don't take the call. I don't care what the question is. I don't care if he's pregnant and on fire and about to give birth to an ass baby. I don't want to talk to him. An ass baby? I don't want to talk to anyone where there's a whole bunch of crap going on in the background, where the guy's drunk, where the guy's cussing, where the guy can't form a sentence. I don't want any more of these. Uh, Drew, I'll be the caller. Yeah. Go ahead. You start. You start. Go ahead and start. Uh, Adam, he's, uh, I can't tell how old he is. He's from North Carolina. Hello? What's, what's up, Adam? What's your question? What? L- Love line? Yeah. Hey, what's your question? I got a question for Drew. Ah, whatever. Go ahead. What's the question? Drew? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm 17. This is where I put you on hold. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Don't want that guy, screeners. They got to they gotta be fast. They got to put it together. We got to move here. I got a new policy. Move your ass. Shake your ass. Shake your ass. That's right. Okay. Shake your ass. Tori? Oh, hey. Um, what's up, you guys? I'm a first-time caller. I just want to know, like, why I'm a sex fiend. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm talking about. No, like, I, I've i had... Fourteen. Having, Fourteen. Yeah. I'm yeah, it's a little... really horny. <laughs> <laughs> I've had sex about 150 times. Fourteen. 150 times. Well, How old? 147. Oh, I beg your pardon. How many different guys? Um, three. Three? How old were you when it all started? Eleven. Yeah. How old was that guy? Um, he was only 13. Really? Wow. And um, were you ever molested, raped, abused? Um, no, actually, I wasn't. Mm. I had a pretty good life. Pretty good. Where's your dad? Um, actually, I'm living with him right now. Where's All your right. mom? Um, in California. <laughs> Why is she not in your life? I don't, I don't They got a divorce, divorce and they, like, separated and stuff. How old were you when that happened? Um, about four. And why didn't you live with her? Um, well, she just, like, kind of, like, gave us that, like, she thought that she wasn't going to be responsible enough. Yeah. Does that make for a good life? I, a I, mother that abandons her kids? Well, I have a step, I have a stepmom. How's she? Right now. Um, well, she, like, there's, she's still sort of my stepmom, just they haven't got a divorce yet. Yeah. So, so he's, he's leaving this woman, too. How is she? She's really good. She actually, she, I consider her my actual mom because she's raised me most of my life. Which right. is great. However, the, the yeah. bond you had with your first mother, the, the separation, That's yeah, it has a huge impact on you. Uh-huh. Huge. Yeah. Now, normally young girls are sort of acting out, have issues with dad, but it's probably worse what went on with your mom. Yeah. Truth be told. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you want to slow it down a little bit, Tori? <laughs> well, like, the problem, I just, like, I like having it. Like, I don't you know like what to do, how to stop yeah, it. Yeah, well, you could just uh, keep your legs together and not not do about, it so how much. How about seeing a therapist or seeing somebody that's, uh, you know, it's obviously starting to bother you, and eventually it will bother you a lot. Yeah. You're You're looking for solutions. You're solving problems from your past by means that, are ultimately not going to work for very long. Okay. And right. uh, you, do you any history of bipolar illness in the family, manic depression? Um, no. Well, my brother, yeah, he went through a depression time because, like, he was really connected to our mom, and he was, like, nine years old when they separated. Mm. And so he got, like, yeah. anxiety, like, I don't know. It was, 
Yes. What What was up with her that she left? What was her problem? Um, they just always got fights and drugs. Yeah. Drugs. drugs. She was a drug addict. Yeah. Yeah. So. This I I'm not able to take care of you means I'm just more into drugs than I am into your kids. Okay. Yeah. That's what that is. All right. So that's that's a horrible thing to happen. Yeah. To a uh, four year old with do mommy. You, do you do drugs? Um, actually, I've only tried pot two times, but I never really got high. Mm, careful. Yeah. Mm, all right. So be careful. You have a boyfriend right now? Yeah. <laughs> how come how come you're having sex with two other guys? No, well, no I that did was before. before. Yeah. Oh, how old uh, how old is your boyfriend now? Fourteen. Mm, that son of a bitch. He's my age. You guys using protection? Yeah. What are you using? Condoms and um my friend went to play the parrot hunt um for me. She's fifteen though and like she got me like all this stuff. What? Like birth control and stuff. You, you're taking she, somebody else's birth control? Well, no. like, because I can't go in without my parents knowing. Why? I don't know. I just heard it. That, I like, believe you can at four, 14. Check it out. I don't think they're going to call. I believe at 14 anything. you can. Okay. But look, you're taking somebody else's medicine. What what pill are you taking? Um, oh, crap. I haven't taken it for a while. You haven't seen it for a while, so you're not taking it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, Tori. Tori. Oh, yeah. Uh, a little therapy would be nice, but certainly just uh, slowing down on the sex would be uh, yeah. would be better. Yeah. It feels like uh, you're trying to uh, fill some sort of hole, pardon the, uh, the graphic pun, that uh, has no bottom on it. That's and, what that is. And just feels good, but it does feel good when the dirt is being shoveled in. Mm -hmm. It's just you have to constantly shovel. Mm -hmm. Eventually it back wears out because mm -hmm. you're on it. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. God knows what I would have done if I had that chance. If you had a vagina? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. It would have been like, uh, I, I would see a picture of you in that reconstruction manual. <laughs> yeah, Not because you were switching over, <laughs> just to repair, what, yeah, would repair what you did to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I was uh, depressed and miserable and had a crappy childhood and a crappy family and all that stuff when I was uh, young, too, but... If chicks started knocking on my door, like, you know, if I was 11, 12, 13 years old and it was like a knock on the door and some hot 15-year-old chick who wanted to party, yeah. And then, you know, then uh, her friend wanted to party too. And as as I got older, 12, 13, 14, it's like, hey, more parties, more but, chicks, but he, more girl, attention. It will be, be even more satisfying because the guy would make it, he would say anything you wanted and make you feel wanted and loved. And, you think I'm beautiful? Yeah. You like my Brillo head? <laughs> really? Wine coolers, thank you. What do I owe you? You pay oh, such attention on to me. the house. No one's ever paid attention like this. You're going to buy me a 40 ounce beer? That's great. All right. Oh, you got a moped. Oh, well, let's go. You'd be a celebrity. That's what that is. Oh. Now, cervical celebrity. No, it wasn't, that wasn't the case at all. Meanwhile, my wife was listening to the show last night for some uh, inexplicable reason when uh, Kimmel was on here talking about me cramping in the shower. <laughs> it's great. What? She hit me with that before I left today. What did, what did she say? Is it true? And Bobcat brought it up, too. Is it true you crapped in the shower and mashed it down with your heel? <laughs> and, and you know, I, I like my... I, here's how you can tell when I'm lying, when I give one of these answers. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even lying. That's you temporizing. That's, that's my heel? That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Huh? Uh, huh? My heel. I thought you'd answer it. No, my toes. My toes. Yeah. I just, uh, it, it's the kind of lie that they do, uh, you know, when they bust the guy at the transmission shop for, you know, once in a while, 2020, or Dateline sends some elderly couple in, in, a, uh, in a motor home that's all rigged up with cameras into some podunk town to have their transmission fluid yes, replaced. Right. And they, they get footage of the guy whacking it with a claw into the hammer. Right. And then, they, then John Stossel goes in there two days later and goes, is it true you fixed this car? And the guy shows him the receipt. And, yeah, yeah, it needed a new transmission. And, and he goes, I'd like to show you something. And they open that little clamshell monitor and the, the guy watches video of him taking a hammer to the old guy's transmission and then he looks up and he looks down and he just goes i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> that just always means there's really no response they never give in they right. should give in they never do it's just uh 
I don't know about that. <laughs> Sort of like the dog from. Uh, Did she mention the dude Davey, you left? Davy and Goliath. That's right. I don't know, Davy. I don't know, Davy. Did she mention the Duke you left to welcome her home? She did. She, did. she brought that up one. Right. Next thing out uh, of her mouth. Uh, That's why my delay of flesh is going to work great for the for the guys who like to talk. For the man on the go, on the pot, likes to talk on the phone and Duke at the same time. Ben Stein coming in here in just a couple of few. He's doing Jimmy Kimmel's show tonight. I wonder how they booked him. That's a good booking. Anderson. Well, <laughs> we'll uh, take, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Ben Stein going to be in here in uh, just a couple of few. Ben, ben put a very kind comment on my book, you know. He did? Yeah. I know my my book is sitting there waiting to be read by you, and you've read the cover several times. Let me see. i got no. Drew's book right no, here. Book. It says, this book does not suck. <laughs> wow. Nice. That's quite a compliment. Yeah, nice. Ben is going to be in here. He's got a book to uh, plug. You can buy uh, Ben's book and Drew's book. Um I'm proud to say I've almost never read a book. <laughs> That's what keeps me so sharp. That's how I keep my edge, Drew. Uh -huh. And uh, I do, uh, I do though. I do, I, I, I do appreciate, or I'm always amused how uh, stupid people think I'm stupid because I never went to college and never read a book. I guarantee I'm smarter than all you put together. Thank you. If we were on an island somewhere, you would want me on that island yes. with you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Drew. I'd build it. Uh, so lean to. Think of and I'm the kind of guy Forget you I can Jimmy. crap about anywhere. And you know big, I mean? big. And big. As I found out last night. We can lash them together. But <laughs> make like a raft. Make a S raft. Get off this damn island. That's right. Um, but you know, I I could take care of your medical needs. You could build a house. Drew, we could oh, really we could start a family. Oh. And we could try at least. We got to get Man, on an clearly. island. Think about it. <laughs> Jenny. Yeah. And Drew, you don't need no TV set with me. I never stop talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've, I've had a few tastes of that. Go ahead, Jenny. What's up? You're yeah, 21. I get to, we get to watch. Oh, am I on? On an airplane? If we're together on a plane, I can't yeah. watch the film. Hello. No. What's yeah, up, yeah. baby doll? Oh, okay. Um, I actually had a question. I, I know it's going to sound really stupid, but I heard. Okay, I had this friend who said that this one girl. I know it's like through the grapevine. Said that she had gotten pregnant by one guy. And then um, she got pregnant by two guys. Is that actually possible for a human female to actually get pregnant by two different guys? At the same time? No, like, okay, she weren't, first she got pregnant by one guy, and then she says, oh, yeah, I'm pregnant. And then she goes have sex with another guy, and then she uh, somehow has another baby. And so that's, they say... All right, hold on. When I said at the same time, I didn't mean both dorks were in her simultaneously. I meant she's somehow caring Let's ask, two. Yeah. Well, hang on a second. I'm not sure what her question Let's is. Let's keep going. All right, but let me just do this. Obviously, you can get pregnant by two different people if it's nine months apart right. or so. Right. So that she's not asking. Right. She's asking, could you have twins and one be? Yeah, but the way she's asking it, it sounds like I'm three months pregnant and then I'll start another pregnancy three months into this one. Jenny? How did she know she was pregnant in the first place? Apparently she went to a doctor and said that she was pregnant. All right, and so then... ask, ask us your question uh -huh. again. Okay. Can you be pregnant by two different guys? Have twins? Have twins. Have That's what guys. I said. Well, one is one guy's baby and the other is the other guy's baby. Yeah. No. Is that possible for a human? I, I guess there is a technical possibility if it just happened that there were two eggs released and you had sex with two guys on within two days of one another. Really? But is you that... wouldn't you wouldn't know you were pregnant. You'd get pregnant simultaneously with both. But I've never heard of such a thing. See, that's what I that's what I was saying. Well, that's not possible. I once you once you are pr once you are pregnant, there are no more eggs released. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. It's over. That's it. Okay. See, now right. that's what I was saying. And he said, right. oh, Wait. no, oh, no. And I thought. All right. right. What that? do you care? What do you care? Because I heard that cats can get pregnant by other, um, like, that's female right. cats can be pregnant by more than um, one right. male cat. That's, that's right. True. And alligators uh, lay eggs and bury them 
on the <laughs> banks of the Mississippi. Good oh, times. great. Thanks. All right. So what do you want? I you, just want to know. You heard that? You heard that? that, that uh, I thought that was That's what I heard. Stupid. You heard that a woman could bury her eggs and uh, give birth? No, to I just heard an alligator. Man, like you would come by and rain some semen on the eggs. Just and... heard that's what alligators do, okay. and didn't uh, anyway correlate that to human beings. Ah, just like you shouldn't have done that with cats. Yeah. But let me ask you this, Jenny. What? Junior college or uh, food industry? Oh, great! You're saying I'm stupid. No, I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm in junior college. Hold on a second. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> I am shocked. All right, junior college and waitress. What do you do? What's your? Do you have a part-time job? I have a full-time yeah. job. Full-time job. What do you do? What do you do for work? I'm a waitress. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no uh, sort of uh, amazement that Adam picked both those things out of the blue. Huh? Okay. All right. <laughs> There's nothing more gratifying than this job. No no more gratifying thing than talking to stupid people. Wow. Let me explain something about stupid people. Mm. Stupid people are not impressed unless yep. th they s watch magic. Because when stupid people watch magic, they believe that that's actually happening, actually sawing people in half and stuff. When you talk to a person who you've never spoken to before, the only thing on the screen is it says is uh, she's from Visalia. And uh, she wanted to know if two people could get pregnant once. Says nothing about what she does. By the way, I, I don't think of Visalia as a place having a junior college or a restaurant, for that matter. No. You know I mean? No, everyone in Visalia uh, has a sack lunch. That's, yeah. Now, they, if they want to eat, you have to go across the uh, border. The river, yeah. You have to go across the river. Here's the point. I just said junior college and uh, food service. Basically, that's, that's her life. You described her life without that's knowing right. her, and she didn't... Uh, D does not... Uh, didn't find that to be interesting. Not even interesting, let alone amazed, but not interesting. No, but that's what... Well, see, that, that was Ben Stein, and now there he goes. Nice yeah. Here's the thing. When you're stupid, you're like a kid in that you think people should know what's going on with you. It's a grandiosity, yeah. It's, stu it's stupidity you. meets grandiosity. You. Yeah, it's what kids. When a nine-year-old comes home, he starts talking about Tommy. He doesn't say, my friend from school, Tommy. He just says, Tommy to says, yeah. Tommy says, and then you say, who? Right. And here comes Ben Stein, everybody. He's got a suit. I'm guessing he's wearing a pair of Vans. Yeah, they're simples. He's, uh, what do you got? They're simples. What are simples? Simples are very wonderful, lightweight, <laughs> very comfortable. Uh, yeah, he's getting shoes. on his mic. Shoes. They are. Yeah. Let me see How those things. You? I'm doing well. I, I'm sorry to make such a thing about shoes. Oh, I always thought those were fans. No. See, Ben is smart. Ben is doing. Ben is doing exactly what I was talking about doing, minus the uh, Dom DeLuise fat guy hat, which is, <laughs> I said that this judging is something I want to get into later in life. That this is like a hammock. You said later in life. You said any time now. No, down the road. Down the road. Right. Down the road. This is a, not too far down the road. I, I, I said this, uh, you being a judge on Star Search, it's a but, very but good anything. Job. I say it's like a hammock under a shady tree it that's is. just on a hillside that I'm moving towards slowly. It is a very good job. I'm I gonna... don't think I've ever had a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing easier, right? It's extremely easy. Yeah, because it's wonderful. It's, it's the greatest gig in the world because you get paid to talk. But you don't talk. But the producer tells you short on time. He's going to have to keep it real short. you got about right. five seconds. Right. It, it's, 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 Sometimes you just hold up uh, your fingers. Just, yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like if you were hired as a painter, but the guy said, look, uh, we're going to pay you for a full day, but we don't got a lot of paint, so we just need to dab on just a little by the door, and then no more. Well, It'd even, be great, right? Even when they uh, do have plenty of time, you're usually not supposed to talk for more than 10 seconds, or, or rather 20 seconds. So it's it's fabulous. Yeah. And, and you get a whole bunch of money, and then you just go home. And they and it's live, so it's real time. There's no starting and stopping, right. and we got technical it's, problems. And we'd like to see you try that one again. We think you get a little more energy out of the next day. It's fabulous. The only problem is we don't know. It's been renewed, but we don't know for how many. And it may only be renewed for a few, and uh, that wouldn't be good. We made 40 last year, and that was a miracle. Huh. That was just a gift from God. And that's a ton. I mean, that is a huge order in TV it's work. huge. Yeah. yeah. What it's do you huge. do? No one does 40 of anything. It was an incredible gift from God. It was as, it was as if I had won a fairly good-sized gift in the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was fabulous. Yeah, but your whole life's been uh, a little bit of a gift, right? <laughs> it's been very much of a gift. It's been a tremendous gift, and I'm glad you said that. I want to tell you something. I yeah. was straightening up my office the other day, and I came upon your tape of when you were on Letterman. And I... 
remember that tape vividly, but it was even better than I had remembered it. It was when you were talking about how your boss, when you were working in <laughs> construction, oh. now your boss yeah. said, run, don't yes. just walk, run. That's right. He told me to go to his truck right. and get Again, the level. And, and as run. I walked, and half, and I said, took two steps and yelled, "Run!" Yeah. <laughs> and and I and I thought to myself, "Wow, is that a great summation of what it means to be humiliated in life and what <laughs> it means to get revenge on the whole situation in life that does that to you?" It is just <laughs> to talk about the Letterman afterwards. Well, it was thank a fabulous, you. Fabulous. He did that to his teachers too well, from high school. I went on. Did you ever see that yeah. one? When I did Letterman, I had a list of people who's, uh, who needed to kiss my ass because I had arrived. Right, but that one was the best one. Thank you. That but I, I, they're all real people. They're uh, my, my boss from McDonald's and uh, Mr. Gregory, who failed me from driver's ed. And uh, <laughs> many, many other people I can't even remember uh, by now. But God bless you, Ben Stein, they, for watching that. It's a that. very, very nice piece of tape. Ah, very, well, very thank nice. you. You're welcome. Uh, hmm. For that, I'm going to plug the book. Well, God bless you. How to ruin your life. Your Ever. love life. I'm sorry, your, your love, love life. life. Yeah. I'm so And how to ruin your life. That's still for sale. Yeah, that's still very much for sale. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, how to ruin your love life. And the next one is how to ruin your financial life. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Well, and so it's a trilogy. They're actually going to be, I hope, even more than that. Well, the uh, <laughs> the book is uh, the book is out. It is uh, selling well. You can uh, visit uh, Ben on his uh, website and find out about the book and where to get it and uh, anything you need to know about Ben at uh, www.benstein.com. Ben will be on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live this evening. How did that go? It went fine. It went very well. We had a uh, Bobcat Goldthwait as the co-host. I don't know. You know him quite well, I'm sure. Sure. He has the most unbelievably gorgeous wife. I yes. Know. I yes, mean, she's he does. Staggeringly good. It looking. makes you angry. It's not. It's not even. A, it's not she was even, eleven when they met. It makes you angry. How? How? How is that? I mean, how did that happen? You. She's you 11. have great insights into life. How? How does that happen? I'll tell you, you how. Both have great I, insights. I'll, into I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it happened. I hope Bob's not listening. Uh, <clears throat> his wife, Nikki Cox, is a spectacular-looking woman, and uh, Bob is. Uh, well, Bob's Bob. That's uh, that's basically a very nice guy. But very nice guy. He's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, he is he is not, which we'll talk about in a second. But I think what happened was is Bob got onto that show uh, where he played the sock puppet or the voice of the sock puppet, and she was the lead on right. it. Right. Oh yeah. And I, he got her when she was green. Uh -huh. See, this happens every once in uh -huh. a while. The guy the guy shows up when you know it's like. There's a guy who's dating Anna Nicole Smith when she's still working at the chicken joint. Uh -huh. This is the diamond uh -huh. in the rough. Mm. Here's what happens with women. That's I think. sort of what happened with my, me and my wife. W <laughs> women, women take, if, if a woman grows up in a semi-humbling environment, even if she's smoking hot at 16 or 17, it doesn't fully sink in mm -hmm. until 19, 20, 21. There's a, there's a little, there's a little couple of years mm -hmm. in there where this low self-esteem is still mm -hmm. surpassing whatever uh, cocaine, money, and sexual advances society is throwing at. Uh -huh. If you can get them there, uh -huh. then Bobcat can, can trade up and really score. Well, he scored unbelievably. He absolutely Mind did. Mind-blowingly. <laughs> she uh, and 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 let me say this about Nikki Cox as well. Not only a spectacular beauty, but nice a humble, yeah. friendly, outgoing, a sweet woman. I met Hollywood her at Squares. Remember that? She's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, awesomely beautiful and awesomely friendly. She used to be on the same set where we used to make one Ben Stein's funny. I just mm -hmm. couldn't get over her. And yeah. also, also Bobcat, I will say, is um, not the uh, loudmouth buffoon he uh, appears to be on occasion on uh, television programs and an occasional movie. He's really a thoughtful, interesting, talented guy. So well, I think she's probably uh, attracted to that. But I agree. I still want to kill Bob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that you got it in a nutshell. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Drew. Yeah. We ready to take some calls? No. Oh, no. We got to take a take break. Take a break. Yeah. All right. Ben Stein is here. How to Ruin Your Love Life is the name of the uh, new book. We'll talk to him. Now, uh... <laughs> Ben, for uh, those of you who uh, don't know it, is, uh, was a uh, political uh, speech writer for uh, many years for uh, Nixon and Ford and uh, probably knows more about politics and the uh, workings, inner workings of politics than anyone we're ever going to have on this show. <laughs> yes, very That's definitely. for goddamn sure. So I want to talk to him about uh, what he thinks about the whole California gubernatorial race and all that kind of stuff when we come back. A 
love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Turn that down, Anderson. Can't think here. Phone number. He always uh, passive aggressively turns it all the way off when I tell him to turn yeah. it down. I think that is it. I think that's an FU. Thank mm-hmm. you. Ben Stein uh, here tonight. Uh, Marilyn Manson here tomorrow night. Same two guys. I don't know why we need them both. <laughs> Sarah Silverman, again, the same person as Ben or mm-hmm. Marilyn Manson, going to be in uh, Thursday night talking about uh, School of Rock, which I hear is very, very good. Ben has a book out. It's called uh, How to Ruin Your Love Life. And uh, if Ben wrote it, it's got to be good. Well, thank you. Let's talk politics for just one moment because it's uh, perfect timing having you on tonight and uh, getting your insights on the uh, California gubernatorial race. So uh, first off, what do you think about uh, Schwarzenegger versus uh, Gray Davis or Bustamante? Who do you like? Why do you like them? Well, first of all, I voted for McClintock. I mean, I like McClintock, too. I think too. McClintock was a straight shooter. Mm-hmm. He was an honest guy. He isn't rich. He isn't glamorous. He's just a hardworking civil servant. I li- And he's true to his principles. I like that about him. Yes, I, I, I was impressed by him yeah, in the, in, he, during the debate. He didn't just yeah. spout out some platitudes. He seemed to actually know the topics. Yeah, he's, he's a smart guy, and he's been in the toiling in the vineyard a long time. But I think... You're a psychiatrist, psychologist, psychiatrist, actually. You would know this. People have a hard time distinguishing between a fictitious character and a real character. Oh, yeah. In movies, Arnold is the ultimate problem solver. He solves the problem of saving the human race. Yes. Over and over and over again. (laughs) And I think people are confused, and they think he really can solve all the problems of California in some kind of violent but brief way, right. in some kind of mysterious way, he will solve the problem. Do you, do you think, though, that uh, that most of what was motivating what happened tonight was a repudiation of politicians? Some Cause, of it was. Cause a, I think they would have put Mickey Mouse in. You know what I mean? They were just anybody's not a politician. It has something to do with that. Uh, it has something to do with the fact that Gray Davis is a particularly charmless individual, and. Uh, yeah. As somebody said, he has negative personal charisma. <laughs> well, when you take a look at him and Bustamante, yeah. it's like, uh, I don't know if those either one of those guys got a date in high school or college. Like well, he, yeah, they're pathetic. Although Gray Davis's wife is actually very attractive. I've never seen Cruz Bustamante's wife. It's, it's real name, Yeah, but look ways. at Bobcat's wife. I know. Let's <laughs> yeah. get back to yeah. that. He should be governor, let's get, right? Let's get back to that. we got to make him governor and then assassinate him <laughs> yeah. and then come in and pick up the pieces. Exactly. Okay, Nikki, you need a shoulder to cry on? <laughs> okay. That's great, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people think Arnold is going to be a problem solver. I think, but I mean, he, there's no way he can really solve all of California's problems. But in movies, he solves even more difficult problems. He just he <laughs> yeah. defeats whole armies of androids. <laughs> well, let, let's let's talk <clears throat> about this because I, I, as you, although you may not admit this, think the average person who's just uh, the average schmo walking around is pretty stupid. Probably, probably. <laughs> Uh, voting may be too much responsibility for the average idiot who calls this show, for instance. A lot, oh, of, dumb, I know. A lot of dumb people walking around. Oh. And we're constantly doing this thing where it's get out and vote, get out and mm-hmm. vote. we got to get more people to get out and vote. But do we really need to get more stupid people to get out and vote on anything? Do well, you, you know what I'm saying? Well, that is a big problem that the founders of this country faced, and they made a decision that only people who had land or property yes. could vote. And yes. They reasoned that if you had land or property, you must have some ability and some education. And some Something at stake, perhaps. Yeah, something at stake. Well, that was the law in almost all countries Good. that allowed voting. Let's and, get back to that. Well, I, I think you ought to write something about that. Mm-hmm. That would not make you as popular as you'd like to be, but you're already very, very popular. Thank you. you. I, I just mean getting, like, for instance, if somebody asked me to vote on something I didn't know about, I would feel like it was irresponsible for me to cast a vote for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that is done. Look at look at the that, propositions. I know. California. That's you my point. Down, there's sometimes ten or twelve propositions that you know nothing about, and you're asked to vote on them, and you decide the vote. If I was watching, like uh, I enjoy the show Survivor, and each week they vote to see who gets off, who gets thrown off. The, and, it, and it's it's vote. It's uh, there's there's many reasons why they vote somebody off, but oftentimes it's because they're not pulling their weight. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't be fair to take someone who's never seen Survivor and say cast a vote mm-hmm. to see who gets thrown off the island, you'd end up just voting for the taller, better-looking one or the fat guy you'd cast a vote mm-hmm. to get tossed off the island. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't be fair. You shouldn't be voting. You don't know. You haven't seen it. I'm sort of this way with the propositions and the 
politicians, which well, is if you don't know it, you shouldn't be voting. Well, this is you have a beef then with the uh, people who abolished the property requirements. There, in some countries, there used to be an education requirement. There was a liter literacy requirement. There was a poll tax. Makes sense. There was a lot of there, a poll tax. Uh, people thought it was a very good idea because if you didn't pay the poll tax, how committed could you be to the issues and voting on it? Right. But then it was held that that was racially discriminatory because so many non-whites didn't pay or couldn't afford to pay poll tax. Well, I agree with uh, Ben Stein. Let's get back to the racist <laughs> prime that this country was in some years ago. Well, I didn't say that's here, a here, good idea. Here, I just here. said that's no, what's happening. Very clearly. Here, here. Okay. All right. So... Uh, Schwarzenegger, you okay with him, or you don't think it, I, anything's going to change? I don't think he's going to be able to change that much, because, for example, he said the very first thing he did when he got into office is going to be to repeal the new increased car taxes. Right. But can if he, he do does that? that, he can do it, sure, I think he can do it. But if he does that, then he's going to be missing several hundred million or billion dollars right. that he needs to right. balance the budget. So where's that going to come from? Then he's going to have to figure out a way to get it from somewhere for that. Right. So... It's not, It's he can't just magically make problems of addition and subtraction go away. I mean, he's terribly capable, and he has very smart people around him, but there is something called arithmetic, which is immutable. Well, I'll tell you what I would do. I would trim the fat and send a message to the fat cats in Sacramento. That's very funny. Right. That's, that's what very, I would that's do. That's very, very funny. I would like to, I would like, that's that's all funny. I would ever yeah, say. Go. I'm very, going to send funny. a message to the that's fat very, cats very in funny. Sacramento. Send one tonight by voting. All right. right. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Ben Stein in studio tonight. And we'll be right back after this. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Ben Stein, the great Ben Stein in <laughs> studio tonight. <laughs> How to Ruin Your Love Life, name of his uh, latest book. And uh, Marilyn Manson in here tomorrow night. And then Sarah Silverman. All right. So let's, and by the way, if you want to find out anything about uh, Ben or, or the book or where you can get it, you can just go to www.benstein.com. All right. Let's uh, press forward. And speak to Brooke, who's 21. Brooke? Hey. What's up? I have a question for Drew, and um, I was just wondering what I have for um, increasing my hormone level. And the reason why I ask is because I have no sexual desire, um, never really horny, and it actually runs in my mom's side of the family. Well, how did that conversation go down? Yeah. yeah. How did that go? What do you mean? Well, how'd you ha how'd you figure that out? Did you have that discussion with your mom? Yeah, oh, I talked to her. Um, my mom's sister, my aunt, actually was on shots like once a month, and she would have a tab under her tongue, and basically she was like taking testosterone to, you know, boost her hormone levels. To kickstart so, her sexually. Yeah. Wow. Like it's she actually has like a hormonal imbalance. Like they take blood tests and. You know, it's proven, and so they would give her, like, testosterone shots. It's and ironic I was just wondering, that uh, huh? you, you can't say hormonal without first saying whore, but yet... She was closed off sexually. Fascinating. It is. It's very deep. It's very deep. Actually, many whores are closed off sexually. <laughs> yeah, but the vagina's open for business, so it's like, I don't, I don't need to know that the guy who's cooking me food is happy about it or not. I just need to know I get my plate of hash. You know what I'm saying, Ben? That's why I'm going to make a great governor one day. <laughs> Brooke, uh, so you've never been interested in sex? Um, no, not, no, not really. I mean, I have been um, pushed sexually. But not because I was interested in it. All right. Are you on any medication? No. Do you menstruate normally? Yeah. Do you have excessive body hair or anything like that? No. Are you overweight? No. Were you ever sexually abused? By, like, my family? By anybody. Or, well, I've been sexually, like, pushed. I mean, I've, I'm still a virgin, you know, but... You're still, still a virgin. virgin. Okay, Who so pushed you sexually? Bobcat? <laughs> he likes the young ones. <laughs> She's too old. <laughs> That's true. Uh, what? Who? Your boyfriend? An ex-boyfriend. Were you tra right. were you traumatized in any way growing up? Did you lose somebody or? No, I mean I think that has traumatized me sexually in one way. Yeah, but... you you've brought up the sexually push thing a couple times, and I I wonder how you define that and what that what means. it meant to you. Yeah. 
Um, I well, I think that's uh, one reason why I'm don't really have my, as much of a mm. sexual. Um, how old, how old were you when that happened? How old were you when you were sort of traumatized that way? Um, you like this one. Eighteen. I want to say like four years ago. All right. Well, what happened? No, I was just dating him, and um, we didn't have sex or anything, but just oral or um, stuff like that. Make, I just make girls into boys and boys into girls. Uh, huh? Excuse me. Sorry. Drew, I'm not going to say I'm not. I'm no longer be, uh, now that you're, you're celebrating your 20th year on the radio. I'm no longer going to explain yeah. what you're talking about. I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay, when you do horrible you. radio and have conversations off the air of out of the arm. and show pictures to guests out of textbooks of guys with their dinglings cut off, I'm not going to explain it. Okay. I'm going to leave that up to you. Right, thank you. So, Brooke, we're not quite sure what this is, but uh, your your con your your belief. You're anyway, no, she's angry. Yeah, and 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 again, I don't. I still you still haven't defined sexually pushed. You went out with a guy when you were eighteen. He wanted to do things you didn't want to do, and he did what? He forced you to do them. What? Did you say that? I, 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 that. All right. Uh, she's I'm, already said that her mother has the same problem, and no, she doesn't. There, and her mother presumably. I mean, let, I mean, have you discovered that her mother was sexually pushed? It, Maybe it really is. It's a bizarre mom, conversation there with mom, but this business of the, the, the aunt taking t sublingual testosterone and stuff that does not sound. There really are no blood tests for what she's talking about because it's not a normal range. Brooke's angry. Know. Sums up with Brooke. Psychological. Yeah. Yes. What's up. wrong with her? I don't know, but this is not a biological process. Brooke. Yeah. Why are you angry? I'm not that I'm angry. I'm just sexually frustrated, I guess, in a way that I don't get. Right, but I, I asked you what what happened with the sexually push thing four times, and you never answered. I I told you that he you know wanted oral or fingering or hand job, and you know I did it in a way to get out of sex because he was pushing me into you know losing my virginity, and I didn't want to. So the only way out of that was to offer something else which I never even wanted to do anyways. Yeah, but did he know you didn't want to do it? Yeah. You told him, no, I don't, want to, I don't want to give you oral sex. Yeah. And he forced you to do it. More or less, he was giving oral to me, and I did not want him there. No. And I told him that, but... Lesser crime, by the way. <laughs> Juries are less sympathetic to that. Uh, all right, but, Brooke, where's your dad? With me. I live with my parents. You live with your parents. Everyone, everyone's in love. No one's an alcoholic. No, mm -mm. no uh, sexual, no weird uncles. No. no physical abuse. No. Okay. All right. The main, the main thing is. All right. So For, forget your idea that there's going to be some blood test that they can magically restore all this with. That's probably not going to be the case. Yeah. You're menstruating normally. You don't have any manifestations of a real, true hormonal problem. Worth getting checked, but doubtful that's going to have a significant resolution that way also i really do and i know this sounds uh, horrible but everything i say is horrible <laughs> he's going down on her for christ's sake by the way who's the victim you ever gone down <laughs> ben you gone down on a woman lately it's a mess <laughs> it is a train wreck down there who is the victim i ask you your honor <laughs> your honor i submit hey, examine uh, examine what <laughs> bailiff get the lights i got a whole slideshow here <laughs> do you know what that is no, that is not Mount Krakatoa from a helicopter. That's an enlarged vulva, Your Honor. All right. All right. But look, she's, Brooke is, is angry, but I get the feeling that she never really conveyed it to the guy. She just looked at herself as being victimized by a guy who was a 17, 18-year-old guy who was moving forward sexually. She, she as guys sort of do. There's something yeah. going on with yeah. her, some anger. My spidey sense was yeah. tingling. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Corey? Yeah? Listen, I I'll tell you something about you women. You don't realize we like going down on you because you like it and because we think it leads to something, but in and of itself, we don't like it. I mean, uh, separated completely from all context. It was not a good thing. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you getting a back rub does not need a context. Right. You know, it, it just it feels good. There's yeah. fingers on your back. Your muscles are sore. Mm. You going down on a chick is not a good thing unless... Like, put it this way. Here's how you know it's not a good thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Here's how I discovered it. Your Honor. Your Honor. <laughs> Drew, you would take a neck rub from Anybody. a 700-pound a, a yeah. syphilis-ridden uh, <laughs> a, a polio a victim troll with a horn growing yeah. out of her back with a dorsal fin, right? Uh, right? Yeah. 
who had leprosy okay. if it was dry. Yeah, yeah. You would take that and enjoy it just the same as a model. Mm-hmm. You really would. You'd close your eyes. You'd do it. If you were going down on a, that same girl, it would be a totally different situation than you, let's say, going down on Nikki Cox, Bobcat's <laughs> wife. Would, would it not? Different situation, yeah. Would different be. situation. Yeah. Why? It's a vagina. You're going down on it. No. Different situation. Yeah. Ben Thank isn't you. used to this Thank prank you, Your Honor. You're humiliating him. No, yeah, not Ben you. loves I'm, this stuff. I'm loving it. Okay. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Wait, no, one, one. Oh, we're going to one? Yeah. All right. Let's talk to uh, Corey, who's 24. Corey? Hi. What's up? Um, I was just calling to say that um, there has been a case of uh, twins with two different fathers. New England yeah. Journal of Medicine. Yeah, but we, I, we speculate that was possible. What she was saying, though, is that, he, that her friend was pregnant. And then a couple months later, had another fa- another man impregnate her with a, a second pregnancy. No, that's not what she was saying. Yes, it was. Because then, no, then, then we said, then that's I That's what s- you surmised, and I said no, early. I said, how did you know you got pregnant? She went to a doctor. I said I was pregnant, and then she had another pregnancy. No. So you can't... She, no, she said twins. She yeah. wanted to know if it could be... We'll play the thing back. All right. And, but still, you said twins. And then would I be. went to twins, and we talked about it as a possibility with twins. Yeah. yeah. Well, she said cats could do. But it. I'd never heard of it. So Corey's saying that she has that she's seen a reported case. So I like when our, I, I love it when people cite uh, animals that uh, are what are, are are completely different. You know, cats. They uh, they got four legs. They got a they got a tongue like sandpaper. They live till uh, eight and a half years old. They're covered no, no, with they fur. Live older than that. Fourteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. I would, that, by the way. I was just testing you, Ben, okay. you're, and you're not doing well. You're not doing well with the cat right. age thing. Now, when, I want to find out. Well, now cats do live to be 14 and 15. I'm just saying when a man pipes up and knows how long cats does, live, oh, that's a bad know. sign oh, for a man. Okay. That's not a good okay. sign. <laughs> we have four cats. Uh-oh. Oh. <clears throat> we love cats. All right. Although uh, one of the cats, when he's angry, pees on the furniture. Oh, my God. Oh, is I, there anything more pungent than pet I have, cat no, ears? I have nothing, and I, I wanted to... Return the cat to, to its to heaven source, but my wife would <laughs> not let source. me. My wife, my wife would not let me. She said it would break her heart. Uh, yeah, but there should be, uh, there really should be some sort of mafia to get rid of unwanted pets for so, males. By the way, speaking <laughs> of having sent, you know what I'm to, saying? Get guys to the moon. Can't we take care of the, stopping the cats from peeing everywhere, or get rid of the smell at least? I, I really, Come I on. don't, I really don't know what we can do Come with on. them—a diaper, a dart. I don't know yeah, what rare, we can do. It rarely happens. When it does happen, it's very notable. Oh. But, but here's my plan. I just, I just thought of this. So often, men love pets as much as women, but we don't look at all of them as our children. Well, my dog, I look as more than well, I, my son might be listening. To this, but I look, <laughs> I look at my dog as very, very important. Maybe, possibly more than Tommy, your son. I, is. I'm not going to say no. He's not more important than Tommy. She's not more important than Tommy. But, but equal. She's a close, close right after. Tommy, Tommy inspired these books. She's close right after Tommy. How to ruin uh, your okay, love? Okay, but but here's 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 the point. You love your dog very much. There's a cat you could do without that's right. in your house, right. and I I think we've all experienced that yes. at one time or another. Yes. The thing sheds, the thing nips at you, it whizzes all over the place it's blind in one eye it's deaf and the, and and the woman treats it as if it's a retarded child who she can never part with i would like to start a service where we sort of quietly got rid of these you know, you know what i'm saying the the cat ran away you, I, you know what i mean we I, got I rid of the never, cat i could never do that Not, you wouldn't talk terrible. about it on the air you uh, wouldn't talk about yeah, it on the right. air but That's quietly right. off the air and possibly in the deep recesses, the dark recesses of I've your mind. I've thought and, of letting the cat escape. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, have somebody take care of the cat in yeah. service. Well, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm reading the back page of uh, Ben's new book, mm-hmm. How to Ruin Your Love Life, and I think you would agree with his point of view. I'm going to read you a couple sentences, ready? Okay. The truth is that your love object is incredibly, unbelievably lucky to have you in his life. Mm -hmm. Just for this unworthy soul to be associated with you is such a grand honor that you don't really need to pay any further attention to his or her desires. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's one of the rules of the book. That's that's actual life. Only your feelings count. Mm -hmm. Your lover's feelings don't count. Because even though she has feelings... You can't feel her feelings, <laughs> right. so how important can they be? And it's, she's lucky to have you. Yeah, she's incredibly lucky to have you, so, so she right. shouldn't really ask for anything else. Yeah, if someone burns her with a cigarette, you don't feel the pain. Right, no. exactly. Well, but another thing, see, th- one of the things that w- rules for women is you can say any mean thing you want, 
And if your boyfriend reproaches you for saying it, say, aren't I allowed to express my feelings? <laughs> right. Because obviously you can't say, no, you can't express your feelings. Right. So you can say, you're a total loser and my last boyfriend was 100 times better than you because that's just her feelings. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I talked to my guy friends about it once and I realized... Their only complaint, their only beef with their wife or girlfriend or any woman in their life is not a beef they have with the woman. Their only beef is the constant beefs the women have with them. That's part of it. That's part of it. But everybody, yes. you talk to everybody and you're like, what's your big beef with your wife? My big beef is all her beefs with me. Well, that's why, by the way, if I, I'll say two things very quickly. My wife is close to perfect because she never starts arguments about anything at all, ever. Almost never. She's almost a perfect personality. Because Ben's too busy arguing. So, yeah. all the arguments. Second, th second thing is one of the other rules in this book is start arguments about everything. <laughs> there's nothing too small to argue over. That's a, and Especially with people you love, there's nothing too uh, small to argue over. Those are words to live by from uh, Ben Stein. I mean, every guy I know, all they want to do is be left alone. I uh, Drew, you never, you never have a beef about your wife. No, you, you don't have any problems. I never sit my wife down and explain to her what she starts to. She need you need to do more of this. You need to do less of that. You need to start becoming this kind of person. All I ever say is, leave me alone. Stop well, that, riding me. Well, that's one of the major rules of life: is that you, you. It's almost impossible to leave your spouse too much alone. You can. I, I know. And it's but women do like to change, man. And that's another humble rule. Marry somebody who's got a lot of problems and believe you can change them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Drew's wife did. Keep you busy. Brandon? Hey. You're 23? Yes. You read Drew's book? I did. I loved it. Wow. Yeah. What's up? Um, my question is, uh, pretty much everybody um, in my family, my aunts, uncles, grandparents, all have an addictive personality. Uh, my, you know, alcohol... Uh, marijuana, uh, smoking, and so um, my dad, uh, he, both of my parents used to do hard drugs, um, and my dad stopped doing that, stopped smoking, stopped smoking weed, but my mom still uh, drinks and smokes marijuana and all this stuff, and I, I asked my dad to read the book, um, but I'm trying to get some suggestions on how I can get my mom to read it. Are your parents together? Yes. Could your dad recommend it to her? Um, see, I'm afraid. She, she's a. Uh, I mean, she's pretty good. I mean, she's pretty smart, but she gets pretty bad mood swings. Yeah, yeah but the, the the book is not. You know, I married an addict or anything. It's just a. Uh, it's a. How do you know? You've never read it. I've seen the cover. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's 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 a it's 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 part fiction. Yeah. It's called Cracked. It. You yeah. could just give it to her and recommend it. It's a good, entertaining book. You don't have to, you, you know, it's not a manual for life, per se, or it doesn't have to be presented that way. I guess you could say, Mom, it would really mean a lot to me if you read yeah. this book. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess... You're all, you, listen, you're all very enabling. You're all tiptoeing around, afraid to confront her with what she's doing and the, the consequences of her disease. Right. You could, you could say something very simple, like, you know, I heard this book, I this book on radio, I read it. There's some stuff in there that sort of reminded me of what's going on with you. It worries me. Would you want to be interested in reading this and maybe maybe it'd help you? Yeah. I know it's, I know it's scary to do that because it's right. cracking the shell of this exactly. uh, sort of uh, what is, denial that she's got. What is her interest besides drugs? Well, I mean, you know, she, she goes, I think to, I gotta wait. She goes yeah. to work, she comes home, smokes, you know, smokes out a little bit. What, and, is she interested know, in anything else besides drugs? Watches uh, Oprah and soap operas and, you know, Oprah. hangs out in her room. Soap operas. And, and she doesn't doesn't have any what, hobbies, what kind cooking, of work sewing. Does she get home yeah. from where she where she. No, you know, it's I think it's home at one, two in the afternoon, twelve in the afternoon. I you know I think it's just you know it's she needs it. I mean my my grandparents on her side they drink about a liter of hard alcohol a day. Oh yeah, well that's just that's the gene. You know, it's underway. Right. What, exactly. Uh, all right, now hold on a second. What kind of work does she do? She um she works uh, in uh, education. She's a teacher. <laughs> Yeah. She's a teacher? <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, it's... Uh, no, wait a minute. I, I don't know. Now I'm starting to think bogus. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Mm. But um, it's, I mean, but she's a good person. I mean, she does she does her job well. Right. Right, just give her the book. Just give her the book and tell her to read it and stop enabling her. 
and start um, start putting. What you need to go to Al Anon. But see, yeah, that's thank for you. Sure. But that see, sure. but this, but yeah, that, but or, nothing. Or maybe yourself reread the book, Brand. I'm hearing you say some things that suggest you didn't get the basic messages, such as things like a person, addictive personality, and you're sort of surprised that everybody's using <sighs> oh, your family. It's getting a weird vibe off, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, yeah. I stop enabling your mom. Are you, are you still living at home? No, no, I've been out for a long time. Good. Lay, uh, tell your dad to grow some balls and give her the book. That's it. Start laying the law down with people. And I do actually, people, here's the thing. Women, pets, kids, they all enjoy a little tug on the chain every once in a while. I think people are like, I love you, so I'm going to let you run all over me. No, no, no. You need to set some, some guidelines. Yeah, it's up, up, for, up to the men in society. Mm. Right, otherwise, you end up like Gray Davis and California's your bitch. You know, and it kicks your ass. The truly addictive Thank personality you. you can't do much with unless the person really wants to change. True. Yes. But at least you don't have to be a but, party to it. But you can, and, you can, and you can create circumstances that motivate them. But you have the to really truly addictive personality has oh, to yeah. hit bottom before he, she, he or she wants well, to Well, and there's a, certain, there's a certain percentage of those people that are going to die. And very never get, l- never get large, well. A very large percentage. And you have to find out which who you're dealing with. I mean, you gotta you gotta be able to find out what the truth is. Life yeah, and, time and, is and, over. and I think it's a I think it's a large, alarmingly large group of people. I don't think it's an overwhelming majority what? of the addicts that, who are gonna die. You don't think it's a large majority? No, I don't think it's a majority. It's gonna die. I think I think I think it's too many. Yeah, I think it's a large and, group, but I don't think it's again, more than fifty you know, percent. The, the bottom though can be induced. If you all got together in your family and said, "Hey, we've had enough of this crap. We're gonna not be a part of your life if this continues." That's a bottom for some people. For others, they've got to lose everything before they're willing to change. All right, we'll take a quick break. Ben Stein is here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Views on Sue's on views, I cues on twos on views at my cues, my kisser, my kisser, I see. My kisser, it's always like my kisser, it's always like my zoom, my z, my zoom, zoom, z. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Drew and the hizzy, everybody. <laughs> ben Stein is uh, here as well. Nice. How to Ruin Your Love Life is the name of uh, his latest offering. The hizzle for chisel. Everything chisel. that uh, comes out of Ben's uh, mind into his mouth and then <laughs> into society is uh, is golden, oh, spun golly. gold. Even his drool should be collected, <laughs> yeah, exactly. kept as a keepsake. So uh, you know the book's going to be good. It is uh, out, and you can uh, just go to www.benstein.com if you want to find out uh, where to get it or anything about it. Okay, where <laughs> Amazon, is we? Amazon is, Amazon is a uh, place to uh, go. And uh, Marilyn Manson in here tomorrow night. Sarah Silverman in here Thursday night. Drew? I like this chapter about uh, be sure you marry somebody who's always unhappy. Yes, yeah, so yeah. keep working think at you it. can make them happy. Yeah, think you can make them happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and like just, the, just work at it. Yeah, and yeah. don't let your lover believe that he or she is valued just for himself, but only for what he or she can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's examine that for just one second. Who do you know... In your life, who's really truly changed? A couple of people, Who not changed, many. Changed. I mean, yeah, whose personality is different than it was? Mine. Is Yours? Like, yeah. Well, I used to be a really, really heavy drug user. Really? Yeah, and I changed largely from going to twelve-step meetings. Really? Yeah, really. I yeah. had no idea. Well, now you. What, what, what was your? What was your? What year are we talking about? <laughs> well, what start, years? Uh, started in about 1966 and went on till about 1988. What drugs? Well, marijuana, hashish, um, Demerol, Dilaudid. I don't count any of those as drugs, by the way, but <laughs> you don't, keep going. You don't count Dilaudid as keep a drug? Keep going. Keep going. That's, for, do, that's a personal thing. You keep going. You do not know Dilaudid if you don't count <laughs> as a drug. <laughs> True. That's heavy, right? Dex- that's good stuff. Good Dexamil. Time. Yeah. Ooh. So prescription uh, stuff, Doradin, marijuana. Tolwin. What about booze? No, I, I used booze, but uh, it didn't do much for me unless I used it in, in conjunction with pills. The I about. did notice from the weed, though, in those clear eye spots. They were pretty, <laughs> his eyes were pretty bloodshot. And then the clear eyes, that's the clear eyes connection. I, I what about Coke? Yeah. I loved Coke, but Coke was self-limiting because uh, you can only stay up at night listening to the 
effing coke bird <laughs> and dawn comes and hating yourself and thinking you're the worst loser in the world for a certain amount of yeah. time and then you have to stop well that was my whole thing with coke and or speed where people would be up for two or three nights straight and want to go out and get an eight ball my thing was like don't you want to have a couple shots of nyquil and put your head on a pillow I mean, are you enjoying there's, this? There's no, there's nothing worse than being high on cocaine. And if, if you want to get paranoid and crazy, yeah. just take a really nice car and drive down to Compton and sit in a 7-Eleven in Compton in a shiny new <laughs> BMW or Mercedes if you want to feel paranoid and crazy. Yeah. And I I, uh, I would argue that uh, being high on speed is worse than being high on uh, coke. Uh, uh, high on when you when the speed wears off, you feel guaranteed suicidal. It's right. the worst. Well, the interesting thing also about these two drugs is that they both cause paranoia that because of the depletions of the chemicals in the brain. And in the case of speed, the paranoia is always it's slow to develop and it's always focused on important relationships, family, friends, neighbors, mm -hmm. co-workers. And the cocaine paranoia comes on very rapidly over three days, is extremely intense, and always focused on uniformed officers. Really? Always. So uh, now, well, I wonder and, why. <laughs> it, no, it, but but no, no, it, no matter what the environment is, the same focus applies to the, the, in terms of where the paranoia why. goes. So Ben just, did, did, did plenty of drugs, got involved with 12-step programs, and are and a different person. Well, is I mean, your personality different? Person, different yeah, though? I am a much calmer person. Really, I really am. You were. You I mean, were my wife before. is here. You could ask her. Now, I, I used to argue all the time and criticize. I still criticize a lot, but nowhere near as much. You had you had more energy. You were more eager for the fray. Right. I'm not eager for it at all. Yeah, I know, because you're waiting to die like we are. <laughs> This no, is what I happens. just don't want to yes, use up you my energy. You're and vacationing I, in Idaho. You're staring at <laughs> trout in a pond. You're hoping you fall in and die. No, uh, yes, yes, you no, are. No, I'm not. Yes. The no. na name of his next book is I'm Dead. No. <laughs> There's going to be four or five pages, no, and then you'll just see scribble and a line going off the no, page, I'm, and the other 400 no, pages will be you're blank. you're totally wrong. I'm much, I'm much happier. You want to die. Calmer. Don't argue with me. Okay. You'd like it. Okay, well, just I told like you I don't like to argue. Lisa? Yes. You're 30? Yes, I am. What's up? A lot. All right. Yeah. Well, tell us the big stuff. Okay, the big stuff. Um, my, my main question is, when can somebody conceive? What do you mean, when? When. Like, it, it's different how for many different people. days it's after the first day of the last period? Or about, about, it, about the middle. About the middle, about 18 days. Okay. It's, it's well, within because... twenty. It's in in twenty four hours of the ovulation, and you can get an ovulation kit and try to document when you've ovulated that sort of thing. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Why? What's the? What are you well, planning on doing? I might be pregnant. And, <laughs> you might uh, be in a very um, different way. Oh. Uh, my husband. Reading, yeah. In Go prison. Ahead. And yeah, I'm reading um, the screen now. Huh? Your husband's in jail, right. and you uh, snuck some semen out. Well, actually, I did it there in the prison, in the Head. visiting room. Had sex with him? No. Well, yeah. No. He um, had his specimen. Hold on a second. Let's uh, <laughs> just do a quick love line reenactment. So, Adam, you, yes. Actually, we did it in there, right in the visiting room. You had sex with him? Well, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. But no. Lisa? Yeah. Go ahead. I really? Do you, do you really have to? I, 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 I'm sickened okay, I by the idea of you sex. having kids. I have sex with <laughs> He sick and nauseated by it. He had <laughs> That's my morning sickness. He, you guys you guys there, get morning sickness. Something. I get taxpayer sickness. <laughs> he had something I, I hear speed on Lisa too. Yeah. yeah. You got a what problem with speed? speed? Am I speed? on speed? Have you a history of speed? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I can just Why hear do it. we always why does it always sound how come what is the sound? It's know. it's how it's can, sort of How do you guys know this? I, I'll tell you what it is. It's it's a it's a it's here's what it is. It's rushed speech, and and this is not that you're high now. Right. This is a history of speed. It's it's rushed speech, mm -hmm. meets uh, two packs a day of cool cigarettes, meets uh, sort of spent too much time in the sun, kind of sunblasted, kind of work. Life has pummeled you a little bit. It's like uh, life is like an uh, ocean, and the sea is always rough, and it's just you're just up against the rocks. Yeah, there's, there's your whole life pirate. against you the don't rocks. Don't even know how close you are. Yeah. Well, we do. Oh no, yeah, I do. We do. Actually, I just said it. Wow. Okay. So yeah. why would you want to have kids? Did you smoke cools? No, I didn't. I don't like menthol. All right. <laughs> but you smoke. You're a big smoker, right? No, not really. All right. But a smoker. Pack lasts me about a week. No. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Anyway. 
All right. Okay. So uh, now your hubby's in the joint for what? Speed? Actually, oh, um, he's a, he's yeah, you could say that. He uh, went, he had never really experimented with drugs and got high for a period of time and it made him do stupid things. He made bad decisions and yeah. yeah. What did he do? Him. Hurt somebody? Rob a bank? No. What did he do? No, he didn't hurt anybody. He what did he do? He in, they're trying to get him a felon in possession of a firearm, career criminal, 15 to life. Why? What's, right. What did he do? What did he do? <laughs> what did he do? What, what made him a felon? Well, he's already he already's done um, 15 years. He robbed banks and armor cars. Hmm. Okay. Didn't they Again, say rob a bank. Yeah, by uh, the way, no, no, uh, no impression of Adams uh, pulling robbing banks out of the air. Didn't, didn't, didn't. That was well, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't. We don't say anything. We, uh, okay. And you know, that's yeah, another story. But he yeah, of course, is in it. Uh, I don't. Anyway, never mind. That'll be another story. Look, there's no doubt that he's good people. <laughs> he is. No, he really is. If your if your mom was Jewish, she'd blow her head off with a shotgun. Oh, she'd probably blow my head off with a shotgun, and she's not Jewish. If she knew what I was doing right no, now. No, if she was Jewish, she'd blow her head off with a oh, shotgun. Oh, she probably would do it now too. Both of our heads. No, Jewish wouldn't blow your. Oh, just shut up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell me about the Jews. So, are you ready for the story? No. Yeah. You went and uh, and visited. <laughs> First off, do you have any kids? Yes, I do. Oh, I know you do. That's the beauty. Here's the beauty of you. You already have a couple of kids you've screwed up horribly, I'm sure, and you're smuggling jizz out of the clink so, so you can crank I out, so can crank out some more there. retards that I can pay for. A what? With a, a speed-soaked mom. <laughs> Steady diet of secondhand smoke and Ozzy Osbourne music. Oh, my gosh. Crib dude, lined with uh, bad, bad rust-colored shag carpet. Oh, you're How many kids do you have, Screwball? How many do you think I have? Three. Three sounds about Wrong. right. Wrong. I hope it's not more. I hope it's not more. How many do you have? How many do I have? Two. Yes. Two. Two. We were way All right, but you're, <laughs> I'm pregnant with you, one. You, you just spit the third into your <laughs> vagina, right? I'm getting ready. Yeah, I'm hoping. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God willing. God willing. <laughs> God would be willing, yes. Yeah, so now how old are the two kids you have? Well, do you want to 17. Guess? Just tell me how old they are. No, All they're um, seven and nine. Seven and nine. And right. are well, they. Wait, I thought he was, had been in jail for 15 years. They're not his kids. Of course not. My of course kids, not. their real father passed away. Of heroin. Oh, shut up. What happened? God damn. What'd you just say? What'd the first guy pass away from? What'd you say? He said heroin. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, wow. I, I feel bad, too. Humans are very no, really. This is... Uh, what happened what to the first kind of, husband? Um, heroin. He got a staph infection from his IV use. And Look, you guys. Carditis. Lisa, humans are highly predictable. Wow. And it's predictable what you're going to do to this third child. So how well, about not guess. doing that? How about just what? stopping it right there? Okay. We've been I'm able to pull your entire... I don't want smart-ass comments. I want... The, I mean, I really want to know what you think I should do. You Not, should uh, You should jump up and down on a trampoline until this semen falls out of you. Well, if I jump up and, and down... And then the set it on fire. My D's would blacken my eyes. All uh, right, yeah. Yeah. Thing, too. All right. Hey, listen, right. Lisa. What? Well, yeah, okay. Let's just sum things up. I'm going to be very quick. Okay. Now, start listening to me. A couple of things. You're not that smart. I know I'm not. As a not. matter of fact, you're stupid. And here's what you got to do when you're stupid. You have to listen to smart people and shut up. And who's smart? I'm smart. Uh, Ben's listen, smart. Listen, a, ra a raccoon is smart compared to you, so shut up. Yeah, you know where you can go, buddy. Just listen. You are already know. effed up your kids enough. Now, don't have a third. Please. Please. And who died and made you God? I want to talk to the other guy. God died and made me God. <laughs> Oh, shut A lot of people up. don't know that. Nietzsche said that, didn't he? Nietzsche <laughs> told me that. <laughs> Nietzsche you said to what? tell you that. I could tell you where to go, but I won't. All right. Your your delight. I enjoy a nice verbal sparring with a young minx like yourself. Ooh, Lisa, okay. look, um, look into some recovery. Go, go, get go into to recovery. Go to an I'm waiting. I'm there. You know? go to, call NA. Go to an NA meeting. And I'm in rehab. Yes. 
Next Good. place. Residential. Beautiful. Right. She's Lisa. in residential. Your residential yeah. treatment right now? She's in residential rehab right now. Did you talk to your sponsor did you, about this idea of getting pregnant? Um, no, I did it before. Okay. Well, but one, all right. but one okay, of the now, things. Before you guys hang up on me and cut me off, I have to say something to my husband because he's listening No, right now. no, you do not. And Why? listen, I want to know. I want to know how it is that you retrieve the semen. Okay. He um, prepared it and put it in a finger of a glove and tied a knot in it. And mm -hmm. when you go to visit somebody in the prison, you can give them a hug and a kiss. And mm -hmm. he had it in his mouth. I gave him a kiss, put it in my mouth, went in the bathroom, and I had a baby, you know, medicine sucker. Like a... a Eye dropper, turkey baster kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I went in the bathroom and I sucked it up. I oh. put it in me and I hoofed it. <laughs> nice. Ooh, she hoofed it. She I hoofed it. it. I have no idea. <laughs> now, how did you think I did? It? I mean, really, swallowed it. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. You put it up in you, and yeah. now, when does your husband get out of jail? You don't want to know that. I do want to know that. Well, I am hoping soon, but um, it is not looking too good right now. I know you're hoping uh, later on tonight, but in force the carts go, he's got another 17 years, right? What was that? When is he getting out? Um, probably um, his lawyer says he's going to have to do probably 15. Oh, okay. God. Oh, God. I know. So what? The kid's bar mitzvah will already, <laughs> he'll already be bar mitzvah. I'm assuming you're a Jewish couple. <laughs> or bat mitzvah. Before your husband gets at it, oh, oh, oh this Lisa. is not going to work. Lisa, I'm glad you're in residential. Just follow direction. Ask, don't, do any, don't rely on your brain for anything. Take direction. Ask questions. Don't do anything that you think is the right thing to do until you check it through with somebody else. All right. Period. Let me, period, period. Let me tell you when I'm in charge. Ooh. This is another thing Schwarzenegger could, could uh, get to work on. First order business. When I start hearing about uh, these convicts cranking out kids from the joint, getting married, having conjugal visits, the, uh, the idea that uh, Randall... Uh, Tex Watkins has, a, actually I'm thinking Randall Tex Cobb, but Tex Watkins of the uh, M Manson family has himself uh, a couple of kids from, in true? yes, yeah. yes, yeah. from inside the joint, yes. okay? How did he do that? Well, how it is, first, he has you, first you get a he pussy, has you get a, you get a pussy Democratic governor, and you get a bunch of bleeding hearts, and then you get the pussy ACLU uh, homo lawyers in there just going to bat for everybody, and they start crying. Well, just because he stabbed a pregnant chick several thousand times doesn't mean he doesn't have rights. And so he gets married, and once he gets married in prison, well, then as a married man, he's entitled to conjugal visits, and he knocks her up from inside the joint. That's incredible. Oh, there's a lot of that. Oh. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Ted for... Bundy has a 20-year-old daughter that he cranked out from inside inside the joint. That's incredible. Yeah, that's that's great. You're uh, let's just say uh, you're one of the family members of the deceased, and uh, Ted Bundy went to work on your 14 year old with a set of pliers before he raped her and uh, and and, oh and eventually killed her, and he's in prison screwing. That's incredible. Because he's got rights. That's incredible. These are the pussy ACLU homos. This is the kind of work they do. That's this is what they do. This is incredible. their plan. Of course, it's incredible. It's unthinkable. But this is what goes on. And this is how it works. Yes, Ted Bundy has a kid from inside the joint. Before he was put down, he got down. And Tex Watkins has uh, kids, too, multiple Lisa's, Lisa's kids. he got three kids. And Lisa wow. has kids, and there's nobody that can say anything about it because we don't That's have the right. That's crazy. We, we don't have the right. The Ted Bundy has the right to take pliers to teenagers and brutally uh, kill them and destroy oh, families. God. But we, he, he has rights. In really, he's got rights? How many people you got to kill before you lose your right to hump from inside the joint? Or, or, or just or, how about just having or get screwed married. Up, again, screwed up people having screwed up kids is something that disturbs us more than anything. Pussy retard, pussy ACLU pussies trying to destroy this world. They don't believe that there's evil. That's the problem. They don't think that there's evil. There's just people that are misunderstood and they need guidance and they need love and they need direction. They don't believe in evil. That's incredible. There's no evil terrorists. Uh. There's no evil serial killers. No one is evil. There's misunderstood. And, and besides, society makes these people anyway. It's not their fault.
Well, after it's our all, job I'm, to after jump all, in. After all, I'm only society's child. That's right. And let me tell you one other thing about those homos over at the ACLU. Uh, the other thing they did is uh, <laughs> recently someone decided, hey, maybe it'd be a good idea to get some DNA samples from all the guys that are on death row so that we could match up some of these unsolved murders that are on the books. Because guys that are on death row, a lot of them are career criminals. And most of them, if they're, if they're in there for one murder, there's many other murders they're involved with yeah. that are on the books. They're unsolved. And they could have manpower that are going to try to... Basically, you're trying to catch a guy who's already in the joint, essentially. Just stop spending money this, and time. This happens all the time when they start investig investigating these murders. They find out the guy's mm -hmm. in jail on another charge or already serving a life sentence in Kentucky for yeah. something that went on in California. So, here's the deal. These guys are on death row. We get a DNA sample of these guys. We match it up to stuff on the books. And we start cleaning off some of the books. Give a little closure to some of the families of these victims, by the way. Uh, ACLU steps in. Oh, no. Nah. No. Nah. Can't do it. It's against their rights. Oh, God. Yeah. Now, they can voluntarily, voluntarily submit to a sample of DNA, but you certainly can't force a guy who's locked up 23 hours a day and you're about to kill to do anything that's against his rights. And my argument is, is we've already stripped this guy of his rights. He's living in a concrete block. You know what I mean? We're going to kill him. Let's take some DNA. And if we want his DNA, we'll take it. That's it. Pussies. Wow. Yeah, and imagine imagine fighting tooth and nail for this. And winning, by the way. Amazing. Yeah, good times. It's amazing. Yeah, right, you're I doing, the, doing the Lord's work. So Lord's work. We, take a break. we got to take a break. I'll say goodbye to you now. We're only on for 10 more minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I think yeah don't be. I know I depressed no, you. No, 12, but we'll, okay. we'll actually okay. 10 to 12. I'm sorry. Don't be depressed, Okay, ben. I'm I'm very depressed. Oh, that's all right. We're going to get you back. out of here. You're going to get probably even something worse now. No, it's all good. It's all good. I happy calls now. You still don't want to die? I am happy in my all life. Right, I'm happy right. in my life. He thinks he's happy. Ben Stein Denial. here. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Ben Stein in studio tonight. You know what I think of whenever you say Dr. Drew is, Dr. Dre, hey, are you a real doctor, man? <laughs> I mean, like, can you prescribe drugs and something? I'm oh, like, yeah. Yeah, tell you what. I really like Adam. Can you score for me? Yeah, can you? Because I'll share them with you if you can. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get. You know, I gotta. I gotta try a Quaalude. I've never tried a Quaalude. They're wonderful. That's what They're I hear. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> They're the best sleeping pill there ever was. They should really. Not, they should not have made them illegal. Really? Yeah. You like Quaaludes? I like. And uh, call me old fashioned, but I like to. I like to get into a few Valium every once in well, a while. Well, Valium are are not illegal at all. They're yeah. extremely rare. Well, that's available. what I'm saying. I like through to score. <clears throat> Well, you, could. Down, you must have a doctor. You could just go to him and ask him to prescribe. Uh, I, I, I try to... <laughs> Hold on. What you, Sorry. You, you're allergic to uh, prescription med I'm conversations? All right. Drew, Drew doesn't... Drew's no good. But I got Dr. <laughs> Marcel, who's a, a plastic surgeon, and uh, he'd basically... He, he'd, he'd give you, like, pharmaceutical-grade Coke uh, right. to, like, a teenager if, uh, if he uh, offered a hand job and some jewelry. You know what I mean? That's that's the beauty of plastic surgeons. They're, they're kind of doctors. They're part pimp. They're part doctor. It's unclear what they are. So And then there's Dr. Bruce, who just, you know, he's, he's basically, uh, he's my monkey. That's all. All right, so I don't need you, Drew. Liz? Yes. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Um, well, let's see. Okay, I, I was listening, uh, and somebody was talking about their mom who was an addict or whatever, and you, you referred to it as the disease, as her disease. Right. Um, I don't know, and I've got, like, 60 days clean or something right now, um, and I'm going through NA, and, um, but it's kind of difficult, uh, for me to really grasp that, uh, that idea. I don't know. I was just, so basically, I'm talking I'm, about an abnormality of your brain function. That's the easiest way to think of it. Your brain is changed and changed permanently as a result as a result of the relationship with the chemical. And it has a it has a natural history to it, and it has a treatment. Well, be that as it may, you got sixty something days sobriety. Good for you. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. Don't analyze it too much. Talk to your sponsor. Stick with yeah. your program. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, see if we can power through a few Six. calls that have been on hold for uh, a million years. This guy's been on hold for yeah. 90 minutes. I feel bad. Christina? Sleeping. Hello? No. Christina, you're 19. What's up? Hi. Um, hey. I have a question about birth control. I'm on ortho tricycline low, and I totally was an idiot and skipped two days. 
And then on the third day, when I went to go take my pill, I noticed what day I was on, and there you go. I took three of them at once, and then yesterday I took it at the re- regular time. Today I got my period, and I was really nauseous, and so I was, well, A, I was wondering if the nauseousness was related to taking the pills at once. It could be, but usually it's right away after you took them. Have you been having sex this whole par- this whole time? No, that my boyfriend. That's a whole different story. No, we haven't been having sex. Really? What's is that? A yes what or is no? That? No, the answer is no. But what's wrong with him? Um. Well, uh, we've been living in Portland for like half a year, and it took him a while to find a job. <clears throat> and he finally has a job, and we just have really different schedules. And then even before that, there was just a lot of issues there, and we weren't sleeping together very much. <laughs> yeah, how, maybe it's time for you guys to break up. Um, well, we're actually, you're, you're going to love this, we're living together. We I know. We figured that. We figured that. This is never going to work. Why don't you break up? You're 19. How old is he? <laughs> you're going to love this, too. 24. 24? Yeah. 24? Uh, that's all right. How long have you guys been together? Um, we've been together for about a year now. Yeah. yeah, it's time. He's not meant. He's not the one for you. It's not working. You're forcing it. It's not working. Anyway, usually the three pills, yes, it would cause nausea, but it's usually right around the time you take them. This is now two days later, your regular period. You can expect that for a while, and you could get pregnant during this cycle. You definitely want to wait until you start your next cycle of pills before you have sex. All right. Again, let's... Uh, and the nausea now, three days later, it makes you worry that it is pregnancy, but you say you're not having sex. John, who's 25, you've been on hold for 57 minutes. What's up? You want to date... Uh, girl pal who used to date your buddy yeah yeah they're both my friends and yeah you know, does she like you hmm I, yeah i believe so why did she used to date your buddy did he drop her or did yeah, she he, drop he, him he dropped her recently she moved to another they live in like two hours away from each other okay well she, listen if he dropped her then it's okay if okay. she broke his heart it's not okay okay as he, far as your buddy goes. He dropped her. Here's what I'm saying. Let's use... But she's not, let's, in, let's she's use, not into John anyway, though. I know, but let's use me and Ben and Nikki Cox as an example. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> if I was dating Nikki Cox and very much in love with Nikki Cox, as, of course, uh, any sane man would be, and she dumped me, as any sane girl would, <laughs> and Ben started seeing... And Ben and I were uh, maybe even closer than we are now, which I don't think is even <laughs> hypothetically possible, but let's say we were just somehow so together in our... Our organs, major, major arteries were fused together, and we actually needed each other's blood to live, which is the only way we could get closer. But the point is, is I would be angry at him <laughs> if Nikki dumped me and I was heartbroken right. over her. If I dumped Nikki and decided to move on, you might be relieved if Ben st- swooped in. You'd I would be, doing, be relieved. Yeah, doing and actually, it would mean I was gay if I dumped Nikki Cox. So. Of course. Well, where are you going? You'd certainly be insane. I mean, it's insane and po- guess- gay. Gay yeah, and insane. You, yeah, you'd probably be dumping Nikki Forban, and that could create a problem. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the point is, is it makes a big difference who dropped who in any of these uh, uh-huh. scenarios. Uh-huh. And yes, I'm not so sure she's in love with John either. I know no. Drew's uh, yeah. s- suspicions on that, and he's right about yeah. that, just like he's right about junkies. Yeah. All right. We'll take a uh, quick break. Ben Stein. Ben Stein's going. He's tired. He's bored. He's got <laughs> not a book. bored at all. I'm he's not he's miserable. It's late for him. It's late for Ben. Ben, God bless you. Come Thank back you. anytime. This was very, very, very interesting and incredibly funny. I don't think I've ever heard a funnier conversation than your conversation with the woman whose husband's in prison. <laughs> Thank you. I'll plug the book while Thank you're on the road. Thank we'll be you. back Excellent. after Bye this. Way. That's it. Marilyn Manson coming in tomorrow night. Sarah Silverman Thursday. I want to thank Ben Stein, How to Ruin Your Love Life. Name of the book. And uh, just a little piece of business to take care of. Ben, if you're in the car and you're listening, you wanted an answer, uh, Tex Watson, former uh, Manson family member and uh, killer, incarcerated for life, has had four kids. Four in, he, in prison. All it, four in yeah, prison. Yeah, all in the joint. Four kids. Yeah. That's your taxpayers' money. Hard at work. ACLU home well, office. Keep, the, keep one, it up. One of, the, one of the other women that was Thank in you. The, oh. Drew, your mic's not on. Oh. All right. Ted Bundy has at least one kid from in the joint. And uh, sweet dreams. So until next time, this is Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew. Same mahalo. Well, actually, I did it there in the prison. In the had, visiting room. Had sex with him. No. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> This has been Loveline. Love
The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Ingold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.